So welcome back, folks. Today, uh, it's not going to be a motorcycle project, but it is in a sense related to the work I do on motorcycles, and that is I'm going to do an inaugural run using my new ultrasonic clinger that I talked about a number of videos ago. I have not had the opportunity to use it yet, so today we're going to put it in service and start experimenting with what works best. The, the victim carburetor that I'm going to work with today is this little two-stroke uh, carburetor off a gas-powered uh, hedge trimmer that a friend gave me a couple of years ago that he uh, couldn't get it to start anymore. And I put new fuel lines on it at the time, and though I did manage to coax it awake, uh, clearly it's not running right, and I suspect the uh, carburetor had fuel left in it probably a, a number of years ago now. And it, uh, it just doesn't want to run right. So I thought this would be a good candidate. It's small, easy to work with, and there's not a lot of parts. Uh, this little little carburetor uh, has already been disassembled down as far as I can go with it. So the, the float uh, needle or the needle, the fuel needle has been removed. The high and low speed jets, uh, diaphragm has been taken off, it's been uh, broken down as far as I can go. So what I'm going to do is uh, since I really have never used this type of cleaner, I've used ultrasonics before, but not, nothing of this scale, I'm going to uh, have to start somewhere. So I'm going to experiment a little bit. And that's what this is really, this video is all about. So normally for carburetor cleaning, I would probably use this, this happens to be a gunk brand, um, carburetor cleaner or silk. Uh, that would be my preferred product. But with this little carburetor, um, the label on the gunk says specifically do not use if there's any plastic components involved. And though this carburetor is predominantly metal, um, there are a few plastic parts. There's uh, somewhere here. Right there is a plug. And I think there's another one here somewhere. So I'm not going to take a chance on damaging this carburetor. Though you could probably buy a new one for 5 or $6 on eBay. That's not the point. What I'm going to do is not use this and experiment with some, uh, another solution first and see, uh, see how that works. Allow me here to reposition the camera a little bit so you can get a better view of what I'm going to do and uh, we'll pick up the video. And just just a little review by way of reminder. This is a brand new unit I bought probably five, six weeks ago now. Ultrasonic cleaner. Uh, it's never been used. In fact, you can see the power cord. I haven't even unbundled the power cord yet. A little instruction manual, a little cover, etc., etc. These are very uh, ubiquitous. You can find them all over the place. The technique I'm going to use today is rather than put any chemical in the tank itself, I'm going to put water in here, clean tap water in here. And I'm going to actually immerse the carburetor in this glass uh, jar. It's been cleaned out. That is glass. And I'm going to suspend the carburetor in the actual cleaning solution. So in other words, this glass jar will contain the cleaning solution. The carburetor will be immersed in it. And then this bottle will be put into the tank like this and will be then uh, in kind immersed in the water. My understanding is uh, the waves, the ultrasonic energy, uh, will penetrate the glass with no interruption. My thinking is this way I can keep uh, the tank clean with just fresh water. I can minimize the amount of solution that I need and uh, it'll be simpler and cleaner all the way around. So that's, that's really the thinking. In order to do this, what I'm intending to do is I made a little hook arrangement here and I'm going to hook it like that and then just fit the carburetor down into the glass jar and then suspend it like that. That's my, that's my thinking here. So allow me to go ahead and get some water in here and I need to get the water level 
up to probably here or so. Almost full. I'm going to start with hot water because you can heat with this. And I thought it would just be quicker to bring it up to temperature if I start with hot water and then bring it up to temperature. I think I'm going to run it around um, 50 degrees centigrade, which is what, 120 ish degrees Fahrenheit. Bring it up to temperature and then start the process. So I'm going to go ahead and get this filled with water and get it heated and then we'll pick up the video. So we've got hot, clean water in the tank, just about to the full level. I got the power cord plugged in. Let's turn it on and see what happens. This is the temperature here. Right now it shows a setting of 50 degrees centigrade. It says the actual is 48 and it's set for five minutes. I haven't changed any of this. This is, this is the default settings apparently. Uh, what I'm going to do is turn the heating unit on with this on off button. Blue light came on. This is flashing so that suggests to me that it's heating right now and intending to come up to that 50 degree centigrade setting which again I think is default. 50 degree centigrade again is around 120 plus degrees Fahrenheit. So let's just let that see if it comes up to temperature for a few minutes and then I'll bring you back. Well, we're up to almost uh, 50 degrees centigrade. Actually it was at 50 a moment ago and it dropped back to 49 but we're close enough. Putting my finger in this water it's good and hot putting my finger in the solution and I do have this you can see immersed in the actual cleaner that is a that cleaner is a combination of wheel cleaner that you'd use on a car wheel and water it's 50 50 50 wheel cleaner and water I've used it on carburetors before and it uh, seems to work pretty well so I thought I'd start here it's pretty safe and uh, I think we're about ready to go. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to increase my time, set it five minutes. I think I'm going to go up to 20 for no particular reason. And uh, see what happens here. Well, the timer just expired, and here is the carb in the solution. You'll see in the bottom, if we can get that focus right there, there is some crud that's accumulated. This, this was clean, perfectly clean. In fact, my, I think my wife ran it through the dishwasher in the house. It was perfectly clean, but look at that uh, debris in the bottom there. I think you can see that. That's been dislodged from the carburetor. No, that's, that's war it's, it's very warm to the touch, but it's not so hot it would scald me. The copper wire that the uh, carburetor is suspended from was cleaned before I used it because I did not want to uh, contaminate the fluid with um, any old paint. There's, there's some paint on there you can see right there. So I'm reasonably confident most of that uh, debris in the bottom of the jar came from that carburetor. So I think what I'm going to do now is see if I can reposition the carburetor, maybe reverse it upside down 180 degrees and then we'll do this again. So I flipped the carburetor 180 degrees uh, top to bottom. So what was at the top during the last cycle is now at the bottom. So now I'm going to repeat the cycle for another 20 minutes. Again, there's nothing magical about 20. I know that seems like fairly long, two 20-minute cycles, but I don't think extra time is going to hurt anything. Well, the timer just shut off, so it's been another 20 minutes in the uh, other position I changed it to. There, I think you can, can get a look at the debris in the bottom of the, the jar. 
and how cloudy the liquid has become. It wasn't near that cloudy before. Now I'm going to uh, basically just take the carburetor out of the uh, jar here and I'm going to immerse it in the clean water in the tank and run it through a 10 minute essentially a rinse cycle because this water is clean and it's hot and I'll rinse it really good and then I'll blow it dry uh, preparing for reassembly. Well there's the carb fresh out of a 10 minute rinse cycle in the clean water. As you can see it came out nice and clean and shiny. Even the, the brass is clean. The copper wire is clean. And uh, it looks good anyway. What I'll do next is blow this dry and then reassemble the carburetor. I'm not going to take you through that. There's dozens and dozens of YouTube videos uh, regarding uh, repairing, rebuilding, and assembling these little carburetors. That's really not the point of this video anyway, per se. It's to really talk about the new ultrasonic cleaner and my first foray into using it. And once I have the carburetor back on the machine, I will pick up the video and showing me trying to get it started and see how it works and if it's an improvement. There you see the bottom of the jar I used to clean the carburetor and look at all that sediment that came out of that carburetor again it's been about 24 hours you wouldn't have uh, thought that I wouldn't have to be honest about it but it seems to have done the trick well, I've got the machine back together the carburetors mounted and uh, we're going to go ahead and give it a, a test run here in just a second I did not install the uh, air screw limiter fittings, you can see here in my hand, those go on the low and high speed uh, carburetor settings right here, my fingers pointing. Uh, I set the low speed at one and a half turns out, high speed at two, I think that's about right. We'll give it a try and see what happens. And I'm not going to put the carburetor air cleaner on right now, you can see that in the um, dish over here to the right, I'll put that on later. Frankly, I give uh, my success rate with this probably no greater than 50-50. These little uh, small engine carburetors are notoriously finicky, especially once they get dirty. The worst thing you can do for these little carburetors is store them with uh, ethanol-based fuel on them. Any fuel, really, but in particular, ethanol mixed fuel is very hard on these carburetors. In my experience, as well as uh, many others on YouTube, and other mechanics I've talked to is that once these get dirty it can be almost impossible to get them clean again and get them uh, restored to service and it's uh, often just easier and cheaper to buy a new carburetor for literally a few dollars than mess around with these. I did this only as an experiment or as a trial run on my ultrasonic cleaner not that I'm necessarily trying to save a few bucks on it. This uh, engine has not been run since I put it back together and you can see here the primer, primer bulb has no fuel in it. So I'm going to go ahead and prime this up a few times here, see if I can't get that fuel up into the carburetor. Choke it, switch on. Let's see if we can go ahead and get this started.
frankly, a little bit surprised at how easy it started and how well it ran. I've done no further carburetor adjustments from the initial setting of one and a half for the low and two for the high. And you actually saw live the whole startup procedure. Did have to fill with the idle speed and bring it up just a little bit, but it uh, doesn't have any flat spots in it. It accelerates right up to full speed very quickly, so I'm a little surprised. And obviously I'm pleased. I think the ultrasonic cleaner did exactly what it was supposed to do. What I'll do next now is I'll go ahead and put the carburetor uh, air filter back on, button up the carburetor, probably put the adjustment limiters on so I don't lose them, and uh, use it a little bit around the house and yard here, check the plug, spark plug, see how it's burning, make sure it's not too, uh, too lean in particular, or too rich for that matter, and then um, call it good. So I hope you found this interesting. I did. Uh, it was a great inaugural run for the little ultrasonic cleaner. And again, to reiterate, the solution I used in that glass jar was one I've used for years uh, on carburetors that have plastic in them. And that's 50% water mixed with 50% of a wheel cleaner that you'd use to clean the uh, magnesium and aluminum and, and the uh, wheels on cars to get brake dust and road grime off. And that seems to work obviously quite well on this carburetor, and I've had good luck with that mixture in the past. That's going to be it for this video. Any issues, questions, thoughts, feel free to drop me a note. Otherwise, thanks for watching.